This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on The South Today, the Invercargill Licensing Trust announces plans for a $40 million hotel complex to be built in the CBD. Queenstown's shower thieves, a symptom of freedom camping, it's much more than just a minor issue, say camp owners. And 150 idea managers are set to strike nationwide. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Craig Storey with The South Today. Invercargill is in line for a new $40 million hotel. The Invercargill Licensing Trust, the ILT, announced plans today to build an 80-room hotel on the corner of Don and D Streets in the CBD. Its next step is to obtain a demolition consent from the council to clear the site currently occupied by cafes and bars. Invercargill CBD is about to get a new arrival. Hi, I'm Ruby Spink in Invercargill. Behind me is the location where the Invercargill Licensing Trust plans to build a brand new six-storey hotel on the corner of D and Don Street. The announcement was made this morning by ILT General Manager Greg Mulvey and Board Chairman Alan Dennis. The plan is to demolish the buildings between the Kiln on Don Street and Bar Luca on D to make way for a new hotel. The ILT board has approved a $40 million budget for the project. The building will be done in two stages. The first stage will feature 80 guest rooms, function facilities, a bar, cafe, restaurant and car parking. Stage 2 will be an additional 40 rooms when there's sufficient demand. Greg Mulvey says the first step in the process is obtaining the demolition consent from the City Council. We couldn't conceive of any reason why demolition consent would be refused. Um, so we have done a little bit of research on that. And yep, we've had informal discussions with the councillors and the executive there and, and we get a very positive picture of their support because of like and this is essential growth. He says nationally there's been a strong growth in tourism. And the time's right for Invercargill to have a new hotel. Invercargill hasn't enjoyed the explosive growth we often read about, but we have faith we'll continue to benefit from the spillover experience during the past year from Central Otago, and that has given us the courage to proceed with this project. The ILT wouldn't say when it expects building to commence, but that it would take 18 to 24 months to complete. I'm Ruby Spink for The South Today. It is election year, so Immigration Minister Michael Woodhouse announced this morning new immigration policies aimed at controlling the quantity and the quality of migrants coming to New Zealand. Queenstown employers, however, are assured that they will still get the foreign workers they need, especially in the tourism industry. It is election year, really Michael Woodhouse case, campaigns. Which is obviously why we started the change in the labour market test a couple of years ago, to make it easier for employers to demonstrate that there wasn't a Kiwi available to do the job. Uh, we've seen very strong growth in working holiday visas being issued, and Queenstown is definitely the beneficiary of that. They will continue to uh, get workers through the essential skills category, but those who can't will be much clearer about their prospects for the future. Woodhouse says that there is still high labour demand in the regions, particularly in tourism and hospitality. He says that this is a trend expected to continue into the foreseeable future. Further to Queenstown, Queenstown, Queenstown's holiday park owners call them shower thieves, those who use their facilities without paying. The issue is another aspect of the freedom camping problem that has been plaguing New Zealand tourist resorts in recent years. And while using a shower without paying may seem a trivial issue, it is a big deal for the holiday parks affected. Here's Mina Amso. Right Queenstown's Lakes View Holiday Park manager Peter Coppin sees them all the time. Freedom campers using his hot showers, then leaving without paying. He can spot them with their towels tucked in their clothes, hoping they won't be noticed. And then they head off towards um, our amenities block down the um, inside the park, past the signs that we have there saying, please don't um, enter the park unless you're a registered guest. And then um, they'll proceed to try and have a, a shower. Each paying guest at the holiday park has a special passcode to enter the showers. 
But somehow shower thieves have found a way around that. To overcome the problem, Coppens has built a $120,000 fence right around his facilities and invested in a high-tech security camera system. It's quite unfortunate because it, um, sometimes we get legitimate guests, so we have to put them on the spot, so it makes them uncomfortable, makes us uncomfortable. It's quite emotional for the staff because it's not nice having to deal with people that shouldn't be here and are trying to lie and cheat their way into the park. And it's not really good for business or good for Queenstown, really. Coppin says he tried raising the issue with Queenstown Police a year ago, but was told the matter wasn't for them to solve. The South Today sought comment from the police and was told initially, quote, This is not a police issue. No involvement. Queenstown Lakes District Council or DOC are points of contact. You will need to try them. We then sought a legal opinion from a former Crown Prosecutor who said someone using showers in a holiday park without paying and without permission was committing several offences. For a start, there was a matter of theft. This includes the taking, using or dealing with property in a way as to deprive the owner of an interest. In this case, it is not the use of the water that is an issue, but the electricity that heats the water. Secondly, they were on a property. A person found in a building or enclosed yard without reasonable excuse commits an offence. And thirdly, the legal opinion raised the issue of trespass. A sign indicating showers for camp guests, trespassers will be prosecuted should suffice. Queensland Police declined our invitation to appear on camera, but in a statement this week they said, Police understand that monitoring of user behaviour can be difficult in a holiday park or camping ground facility. However, it is up to each business to take steps to protect their properties from theft. Coppins is not happy. He's left with no obvious solution to one of the frustrating side effects of freedom camping. Mina Amso, The South Today. Rabobank is predicting a farm gate milk price of around $6.25 a kilo for the 2017-2018 season, which is well up from last season, $2 more in fact, from $4.25. Global dairy prices are now better balanced than at the start of this season. The bank report says that this was likely a flow through and will create largely a stable commodity pricing in the new season. However, Rabobank dairy analyst Emma Higgins says despite the improved market balance, the possibility of further lifts to the current season, season's milk price is limited. Around 150 idea managers nationwide are set to strike this weekend. Managers were previously on, st on strike over Easter regarding their current workload. Negotiations are underway today between idea management and the ETU union with a separate strike planned for 3,000 support workers Thursday of next week. The healthcare sector had a big win yesterday as caregivers were offered a government equal pay agreement. It's being able to buy things that you want, not just the things you need, and to be able to, to pay for things that you do need. Be able to go to a doctor and then go to the pharmacy and get what he prescribes. The offer aims to close the pay gap between men and women and lifts care and support workers pay to between $19 and $23.50 from the 1st of July, rising between $21.50 and $27 by July 2021. However, ETU is involved in another negotiation and as of 3pm today, the operational arm of IHC, IDEA, are still set to strike this weekend following a lack of progress in their pay talks. Union members voted by secret ballot to strike. ETU union advocate Alistair Duncan says the workers have had little support from their employer and IDEA has refused any pay rise whatsoever. We're meeting with the senior management of IDEA services today and what we hope is going to be a um, productive meeting to try and resolve the differences which led to the issuing of strike notice. Um, we're hopeful of an outcome but there's a lot of issues we need to work through um, and so we're not able to give any details at this stage. He says the union has been asking IDEA to make a series of modest changes to the collective agreement around issues of job security, consultation and health and safety for six months. What we hope is that 
we can bridge the gap between us on the issues around working hours, around the reviews and guaranteed hours, and in the shadow of yesterday's important equal pay announcement, obviously also take some steps towards the delivery, um, which IDEA has been a part of. The strike comes as IDEA announces it is exiting some services with as many as 800 staff affected. I'm Roselle LeBone for The South Today. And Janine Stewart, Chief Operating Officer of IDEA Services, told The South Today in a statement that there are plans in place to ensure that no one that IDEA supports is adversely affected by strike action. Still to come on The South Today, the deadline has passed for the Herbert Flock. What shall become of the wandering birds? A three-dimensional virtual tour of World War I tunnels and Dunedin's Anzac Day preparations are well underway, with only six days to go. Get finance and get on the road. Talk to MTF today. Active Furnishes Limited. Home of quality service with superior product and an in-house design team who are always happy to advise and create an imaginative solution for you. Active Furnishes Limited, part of Dunedin's design history. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. say the grass is always greener, but not if you have Ready Lawn. Call Ready Lawn today and make them green with envy. Granddad loved his family and surfing in that order. He taught me to surf and we spent a lot of time in the water together over the years. When he died, I strapped the camera to the nose of his old board and filmed the paddle out at St. Clair. Gillian's played the video on the big screen at his funeral. Granddad would have loved having everyone come out one last surf for them. Gillian's Funeral Services, helping families celebrate the lives of their loved ones for generations. Gillian's.co.nz Aero International knows what the essential ingredient is for accomplishing great projects, working with great people. 30 years on and 3,000 projects later, with 10 offices and 400 staff nationwide, a company who values partnerships with their clients and carries a strong reputation for passion, integrity and the love of a challenge. Excelling in the construction industry and helping to create, with our partners, more iconic New Zealand buildings. The University of Otago, an institute of world-class education and the social epicenter of the city, with outfits needed for more formal functions like the ball and for less formal functions like... The zoo? Are you sure? Yeah. Trust me. Yeah, Dad, you'll definitely see me. I'm the one in the yellow and blue face paint and the onesie in the zoo. Loss of collagen is the reason for those fine lines and wrinkles. Silverhorns Collagen Plus naturally supports your collagen levels, giving you younger, firmer looking skin, healthier, shinier hair and stronger nails. Joints, tendons, ligaments and cartilage all benefit from healthy collagen levels, the very foundation of structural health. Support collagen levels naturally with Collagen Plus by Silverhorn. Be quick, buy one now and get a second pack half price. Call now 0800 502 402.
Thank you for staying with the South today. The deadline has passed for Herbert man Wayne Richardson to significantly reduce his flock of wandering birds. The former farmer has been pressured by the Waitaki District Council to reduce the risk of the animals that they pose as a hazard to motorists on State Highway 1. Richardson has reduced his geese, ducks, chickens and roosters from uh, 60 to about 40, but the Waitaki District Council wants it, it down to 12. I want to keep them alive rather than I can get rid of them by killing them, but I don't want to do that. Richardson says that when he brought his property six years ago, the council told him he could keep up to 100 animals. But if the council makes him get rid of his ducks or geese, he says he will leave the property. A comprehensive University of Otago survey of World War I tunnels has just been completed. The project is part of the 100th anniversary commemoration of the Battle of Arras in France. Roselle Le Bon spoke with a final year surveying student, Damien Halvert, who is now developing a three-dimensional virtual tour of the tunnel complex. University of Otago surveying student Damien Ouvet from Le Mans in France has developed a software program enabling anyone to explore World War I tunnels 15 metres below the surface. The virtual experience was created from more than three terabytes of surveying data of the city of Arras's historic chalk tunnels. It was very uh, magic because um, uh, we can feel the weight of history. Um, yeah, just uh, seen a lot of inscription, a uh, lot of graffiti, draw, and there were a lot of artefacts too. Survey School Senior Lecturer Dr Pascal Sigue has just presented the French city of Arras with the results. And during the Second World War, French used it uh, in order to be uh, uh, safe from the bombers and from the Cold War. The Ronville Tunnel Network was dug by members of the New Zealand Engineers Tunneling Company from 1916 to 1917 to provide secret access from Arras beneath no man's land to German trenches. At one stage the tunnels were home to nearly 10,000 troops and were complete with electric lights, water, kitchens and toilets and even a light rail network. The tunnel walls are etched with names and sketches applied by New Zealand engineers. Seven of these diggers were graduates or staff from the old School of Mines in Otago. Roselle Le Bone, The South Today. Wow. Anzac Day is just around the corner and preparations are well underway in Dunedin for this year's services. Guest speakers from far and wide will be welcome to the region and people are being warned to come prepared for any weather conditions. They will be remembered rain, hail or shine this year in Dunedin. President of the Dunedin Returned Services Association, Locks Callis, says Anzac Day is a way to commemorate and acknowledge what people accomplished in the past. Well, Anzac Day is when we come together once a year to commemorate uh, the fallen and those who have served in the past uh, and just a time to pause and reflect so that you can remember the deeds of what those people uh, accomplished in the past. The RSA is in full swing of preparations for the day and services will be held regardless of the weather. If it's a bit inclement, our advice to people is to wrap up warm, um, raincoats, bring a torch uh, so you can, they can read the, the service sheets um, and uh, a seat if they need to. Thousands of people are expected to attend services around Dunedin. Anzac Day commemorations are being held across the country next Tuesday, April 25th, beginning with the customary dawn service in many areas. We're in the, uh, the mad minute now. Um, we've got Poppy Day coming up on th uh, Friday, posy making on Monday, then the dawn service. So uh, there's a bit of pressure on, but uh, everything's falling into place quietly. Collectors will be out this Friday for the annual Poppy Appeal Day. Alice Stokes, The South Today. After the break on The South Today, Otago Polytechnic's cookery school tackles food waste head on by cooking with only found food. And it was good. And the usual stories of skating dogs, electric cars and our weather. Season. We're proud to dress the region. Alex.
Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Bring some more joy into your world by adopting one of our adult animals at SPCA Otago. Call now on 4738252. Please adopt a pet now, they will love you forever. Hi, I'm Dennis Charlotte and road racing motorcycles is my lifetime passion. It's a massive adrenaline rush but the high speed crashes have been tough on the body over the years. I almost feel as old as my mate Ian. Sportsville, supporting tendons, ligaments and cartilage. And Energy Plus helps replace the energy that everyday living takes away. Now I feel more alive and have more sustained energy to really enjoy my racing. Buy two packs of Sportsville and get two packs of Energy Plus absolutely free. So call now 0800 502 402. Garador Dunedin, delivering quality stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 15 years. New doors, replacement doors, repairs and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team at 553 Kaikai Valley Road, visit www.garador.co.nz or call us on 488-5676. From rare to the recent, visit the legendary hard to find for your quality second hand books. With the largest stock in New Zealand and a friendly book loving atmosphere. For good prices, buying or selling, come visit 20 Dowling Street. This is the South Today. Otago Polytechnic's cookery school whipped up a meal fit for a king last week using only found food. The diploma in cookery class foraged for and prepped a selection of food culminating in a four-course meal in Queenstown. The students had just two days to turn their foraged food into a five-star meal. Across central Otago, cookery students searched for the best wild mushrooms, thyme, figs and more and turn them into Michelin star worthy quality dishes. The meals were accompanied by fresh local meat like rabbit or venison. Experts on native flora, fauna and marine life were on hand to impart their wisdom. The students found the exercise exciting and challenging. Yeah, we had some here, some local here and some local venison which is really prima. We got some apples, some elderberries, we even found some figs. I got green gauge plums. Just getting accustomed to the kitchen and that in the restaurant on the night and knowing that we were doing all the food. The lecturers say it's about getting back to the basics of cooking. The students hope the event will inspire the next generation of innovative up and comers in the industry. Roselle Lebone, The South Today. Hmm, fluffy animal story time. Skateboard loving canine Oscar has become a regular sidewalk surfer on the streets of the seaside suburb of St. Clair in Dunedin. The six year old Collie Labrador Cross showed off his skills to reporter Roselle LeBone at the weekend. He can claim the curb like no one's business. Collie Cross Oscar's assurance on the skateboard would be the envy of many humans. Just don't call him a one-trick pony. We're teaching him how to surf as well because he has the balancing going on. We've got a surfboard for him, so we're teaching him on flat, flat water at the moment. Oscar was a rescue pup post-Christchurch earthquake, found online by Benny and brought to Dunedin. He, him and another puppy were found in a park and there were a whole lot of dogs just being left behind by the owners after the earthquakes because they had no homes themselves and for whatever reason, they were just left in the park, so the dog watch, um, who's a dog rescue outfit in Christchurch, saved him and I saw him online and went and got him. Benny and another trainer taught Oscar, who took to the tricks immediately and was soon surpassing all the other dogs, hitting the waves on a surfboard and pounding the pavement on a skateboard. The trainer taught 
taught me how to do it, but I haven't seen her dogs doing it, so I'm not sure if he's better than them. But because he's very gung-ho and will try lots of things. The secret, she says, is all in the back legs. I've taught him how to use his back feet too, so he knows how to back and then find things and go upstairs backwards, where most dogs don't really understand that the back feet are there as well. It would be great to say he does it for the fans, but really it's for the food. He's a food orientated dog. Um, he'll do anything for a laugh. So next time you see a dog catching a wave or the curb, remember that's Oscar, the Christchurch earthquake survivor, just out enjoying his new life in Dunedin. Roselle LeBone, The South Today. Well done, Oscar. You are a good dog. And now recapping tonight's top stories on The South Today. The Invercargill Licensing Trust Board has approved a $40 million budget for a new six-storey hotel on the corner of Don and Doon Streets. Queenstown Holiday Park owners are sick of shower thieves. Those, those are those people who are sneaking into parks and taking showers without paying. It's illegal. And ITU union members and idea workers step into negotiations today with the threat of ongoing strike action looming. All right, it's time now to have a look at tomorrow's weather. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Silverhorn Collagen Plus. Starting with the southern view, that is a beautiful little archway in Queenstown. This is, of course, it's autumnal weather. And that's people taking a very pleasant stroll. And that looks like southern farmland, green and lush and verdant under an overcast sky. Because in our situation, the anti-cyclone, which is parked just offshore, directs cool southwesters over the country for the next few days. Expect more of the same and a few showers tomorrow morning only. Generally crisp and clear. To the southern outlook all across the, the great deep south, easing southwesters, showers clearing pretty much 12 no matter where you look. To the central outlook, Alexandra light southwest is fine and 14, the same for Queenstown, Te Anau, and for Wanaka, uh, although it might be a little bit showery in Te Anau. Off to Awamaru, easing southwest is some cloud and 13, 14 in Omarama and Timaru light southwest is a little bit of cloud and the same for Twizel 13 and 14 for you. In Dunedin tonight, it's a few showers for us. Gusty, cold southwesters in seven. Thursday, cold southwesters again. They'll be fresh and potent. Cloudy, a few showers, but a crisp, clear, cool afternoon. Four and 13, they aren't great numbers, but Friday, sunny periods. Cloudy, of course, light southwesters, seven and 15. In the lovely town of Invercargill tonight, cloudy this evening. Fresh, cold southwesters in eight. Thursday, showers clearing cold southwesters, they'll be easing slowly, sunny periods increasing, yay, 6 and 13, and Friday lingering uh, cloud and cool moderate southwesters, 4 and 14, pretty good in Invergiggle. And that is the South today, it is a privilege to present for you, I'm Craig Story. thank you, be good to each other, good night. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.